what do you think is happening with disclosure right now? And what do you think are some of the possible motives that could be behind this? Well, uh, Stephen Greer, I've known for, you know, since 2010, and I know he's very passionate about disclosure. He wants full disclosure. He wants, uh, he's had many whistleblowers come to him and, uh, you know, disclose their backgrounds and their things. So he, you know, he, this is his lifelong mission. Um, You know, he, he's, there's, he's a controversial person. There's a lot of, you know, uh, different things that have gone on over the years. Uh, but I think his heart is in the right place as far as wanting full disclosure. And there is seems to be another camp that is more about limited disclosure or a slow, uh, a slow drip disclosure and perhaps even limiting disclosure so it better fits their paradigm and narratives. And I think that's what we're dealing with. I think we're dealing with the Greer full disclosure camp versus the limited hangout. Let's disclose a little bit as long as it makes us money and profit and we can stay ahead of the, 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 uh, the narrative and, uh, and sort of work the system, so to say. Either way, we're going to get disclosure. That's the, and that's sort of what's happening this past week. We're getting this massive dump of whistleblowers coming out. So in that sense, it's a win-win. Uh, it's just where does this go, and how how do the how does the public um, react to these um, to these different stories? Which ones are they going to take? Which ones are they going to reject? And uh, who's rejecting what? Who's taking this? You know, and there's a lot of that going on right now. There's a lot of um, I, overall. I think from what I've seen, and maybe you you may have traveled the interwebs a little more than I have today. Uh, I think the Stephen Greer event seems pretty positive overall. Um, uh, the other, the David Grish, Grush uh, um, thing, there's it's a mixed bag. Some people are calling it a psyop. Some people are uh, saying he's a hero. Uh, Greer actually said is giving him the benefit of the doubt and saying you know that they met and that he's he's legit. Um, I think that what's happening is that a lot of these whistleblowers are most likely legit. It's just how they're being presented and which which news groups get them will probably be able to, you'll probably be able to tell which camp, not that they're necessarily in, or what, but how the narrative is being steered. So for example, my good buddy, Jeremy Corbell, uh, said he he vetted uh, him and George Knapp vetted Gresh Gresh uh, uh, you know months ago, and uh, and sort of talking him up and really putting him out there. Uh, I know my buddy Jeremy also has uh, the best intentions for disclosure and wanting the world to know this stuff, but it's it's just I do see some of these again um, uh, narratives being played out and pushed through certain groups and certain news agencies, uh, particularly the mainstream news, picking up certain things and not picking up other things. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of a key I, key to say, okay, who's being used for what, for which agenda? And, uh, and we saw with, with, with David Grush this whole week, you know, all these news agencies picking up all this stuff. And then we saw yesterday with Stephen Greer's event, he had uh, how many six whistleblowers on the podium on his event? Mm-hmm. Plus, he did a whole weekend thing. And how much news coverage did he get? Your Instagram feed got cut off <laughs> yeah. the way through. So, <laughs> to me, that shows you that there is a an agenda for controlling the information that gets out there. And one of the most interesting takeaways from Greer's event was not even really about ETs, extraterrestrials, interdimensional, non-human. It was about the military industrial complex abusing this technology. And Mm -hmm. actually, you know, most of the whistleblowers, their biggest concern that they kind of finished their statements with was that people are dying, that military personnel are dying because of the military industrial complexes, apparently uh, crimes that they're committing using these craft. 
Yes, and and their uh, lack of transparency in you know in in energy sources and stuff like that for humanity. You know, we're still suffering uh, from you know Nord Stream pipelines getting blown up, and uh, you know Europe having to uh, pay ex extra economical uh, energy prices. Uh, you know, just just even the use of fossil fuels in general. Um, and even alternatives, you know, in this this sort of power game with power, you know, in electricity mm -hmm. and, and and energy, and just the uh, the ecological effects, like these are crimes against humanity. That these technologies, you know, I'm fully in in the Greer camp when he talks uh, passionately about uh, these technologies being held back uh, from humanity in order to make profit and and that sort of thing. So I think that's why you're going to see uh, this narrative being steered more, more in a fear-based narrative. And we've seen that through the TTSA movement. We've seen that through, um, uh, uh, you, you know, all of the chatter that's been going on in, in the news uh, outlets and in Congress of late. Uh, it tends to be more about, we don't know what they are. Uh, they appear to be not hostile, but they are flying into our airspace, and that's an issue, and we need to further our investigations and our military. We need to get more funding for our military groups so they can investigate these things. And, uh, and I think, um, now I had a, a, a personal uh, dinner with uh, Chris Mellon uh, a couple years back. And, um, and I asked him outright, I said, Chris, you know, I, I love everything you're doing. It's awesome. But why are you constantly putting this fear-based narrative around the subject when you know, you know, uh, I've heard that Chris has claimed to be a contactee or, you know, or knows contactees and knows that this whole thing is not a, um, such a, uh, a fear-based thing, right? It's most contactees may have fear initially, but then they realize it's it's not that. And um, I think uh, what what's the group out of uh, Florida, Edgar Mitchell's group that did free. They did a, a survey study, uh, you know, with contactees from all over the world, and and they the data that they were able to collect after thousands of interviews is that ninety percent of the people thought this was a benevolent uh, event. You know, the the wow. ET contact is is mostly benevolent. So, um, so this idea that it's fear and that we need to be in fear and it's scary and they're going to come and get us, uh, pardon my French, but it's all horseshit. <laughs> like the evidence just says it. And, and based on all of the people that I've interacted with, uh, you know, through my show and everything else, it's very much a very positive, uplifting thing. Um, not to say that negative things don't happen. Obviously, you know, the Virginia case, soldiers have died. There's been, you know, uh, deaths uh, uh, coming into contact, you know. John Burroughs from the Bentwaters case, uh, having uh, heart issues after touching the craft. You know, there's there's these types of things, but it's not a fear-based thing in, in, in general. You know, there's some negative encounters, but but for the most part. So I asked him, I said, why, why are you perpetuating this fear-based uh, agenda? He told me, well, that's the only thing that these uh, these old guys in Washington, D.C. will will listen to. If you don't package it in that fear-based uh, way, they're not going to even uh, take it take it seriously. And I and I get that. I understand that. But um, I think we're we're we. I think that you know is, that approach is um, you know that may work for what he's doing. But I also know that there are uh, other agendas. You know whether he's part of it. You know his cousin John Warner doesn't seems to see seems to think that he's very much part of the uh the problem and not the solution um i don't know i don't have that uh, that that first hand testimony or evidence i can't say either way but i do it does seem quite suspicious that uh the groups that he associated with in the past with ttsa and uh lulu alizondo and others uh that were perpetuating you know the the new york times and all that stuff how there is much truth to everything that they've been reporting on, it does seem very limited um, in that sense. I, I even brought it up to uh, Nick Pope, uh, and uh, I was recently at an event with him, and I, you know, I said the, the citizen hearing on disclosure 
this event I produced in 2013 has all, all the witnesses you need for, for the government to, to you know, dive deep into this, but yet they're specifically only going after and talking to a, a, uh, a limited number of witnesses. Um, they're not fully, um, and, and those witnesses tend to say, well, it's just a few fighter pilots that have seen these things here or there, and we don't know. And it's that, it's like, no, we have way more information than that. Like on the record, uh, in, in uh, you know, FOIA requests, you know, as I mentioned before to you uh, on our last talk with um, Greenwald and uh, the Black Vault, you know, there's mm -hmm. tons of information there. Um, you know, Greer, like all of his documents in, in uh, his projects that he's been presenting for, uh, to Congress. So, so those things don't add up when you look at these different um, narratives being put out there in different uh, camps, so to say. Um, I'm, I'm more of the, we need full disclosure, like the, the humanity can handle it. And, uh, and if you think otherwise, then you probably have some agenda that you're pushing and you're just trying to get military funding and you know trying to play these power games. And it is quite auspicious that Leslie Kane and others, when they were pushing the John or the David Rush story, they were saying that they had to rush. Mm -hmm. You remember they had, to, they had this urgency that they had to get out there. Perhaps they knew Greer was going to be, you know, he had announced his, his conference way earlier. Perhaps they were trying to get ahead of that narrative and were told that they had to get the story out uh, in order to sort of uh, get the uh, news um, uh, agencies sort of on that uh, path and, and sort of take away from Greer's uh, what he was putting out there. I don't know. That's just speculation, but uh, but that's a. It seems like it with the timing. Uh, a lot yeah. of people had said that initially when the news first broke, and I actually I didn't realize that a lot of Greer's event was not going to be talking about ETs at all. It was going to be talking about you know these several corporations that basically are controlling everything, and now at this point controlling our government, mm -hmm. and. That's pretty interesting, too, because I was thinking, like, what would force them to have to admit aliens? Oh, all the other crimes that they're covering up for. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you when you then when you also add in this other collective body of evidence, we know about the human trafficking. We know about the Epstein stuff. We know Epstein himself and uh, Ghislaine Maxwell were very interested in Atlantean uh, type um, uh uh, mythology and and going into um, you know she she was a uh, uh, she had a submarine pilot uh, a submarine license uh, she was one of a, a student of Jacques Cousteau looking for Atlantean relics you know there is a uh, and we've seen his uh, sort of the Epstein Island the uh, sort of Atlantean cultish type um, uh, symbology that's built around that. So um, then you have, and we know the ties between the Clintons and the Epsteins and all of this stuff. And so there's this deep state, this, this continuity of government that has a very dark side to it that is uh, uh, you know, part of all of these atrocities uh, in humanity. And they tend, they tend to connect to you know, the TTSA we have through the WikiLeaks, we have, um, you know, Tom DeLong talking to John Podesta, uh, at, those are involved in that same, you know, Pizzagate type uh, um, uh, WikiLeaks that we got using that strange language for having parties with kids. Um, in those same emails, there's Tom DeLong talking with John Podesta about UFOs. And those all came out, you know, years ago. So when you look at these circles and how they're hanging out and who's doing what and all these types of things, you kind of got to be a little bit suspicious about, okay, what's really going on. And, I, and I'm not accusing uh, Tom DeLong or the TTSA of any of that stuff. I'm just saying there is association there. So that perhaps they're following, uh, chasing some rabbit holes down that direction that could, that may not be in the best intentions for collective humanity, because if they're associating with people that we already know don't have the best intentions for collective humanity. They could get caught up in those narratives. Uh, so I'm not. So by any means, I'm not accusing those guys of doing that stuff. I'm just saying by association, your narrative might get a little skewed.
So one of the other things that I thought was really interesting that you brought up was how this could potentially be um, a way to kind of transition us to a digital currency. And Mm -hmm. can you talk about that a little bit more? Because that's a really interesting perspective that I haven't heard anyone else bring up. I see. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so Ed Dowd actually just did a, uh, on the, uh, Stansbury research, um, podcast, uh, just yesterday came out and, uh, um, it was funny. Um, Danielle, had just, uh, asked him about it and he's, he jokingly, he's like, he doesn't believe in UFOs at all, but he's calling it a psyop. And, uh, you know, he, he makes the same, same, um, observation that I've been making is that, uh, you know, to, to get more military spending, uh, to create a more fear uh, and a more of an excuse for lockdowns and, you know, to create a, a existential threat, so to say, from uh, another outside force uh, to put fear. The only way they're going to roll out these CBDCs is uh, for humanity to be in, a, in quite a pinch. Um, just like we were with COVID, you know, that's how they were able to get the Vax uh, agenda really moving and everybody, you know, you can't go to work and, oh my God, wear a mask and all this stuff, which now, you know, uh, again, you know, in hindsight, we know it's all horseshit and who was calling it out from the beginning, uh, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. And, uh, and, and many other great, great um, uh, doctors and, and, and uh, humanitarians were calling the calling it out in real time, but they were censored. They were, you know, uh, uh, we know through the Twitter, Twitter fire files, how the DOD was, uh, you know, and the DOJ was going in and messing with all this stuff. So we, we clearly know now we have a picture of continuity of government and groups within government that are, you know, trying to s- stay in this, um, this, this totalitarian type, create this totalitarian type control and throw out the constitution. And, um, and we have, uh, you know, Ed sort of said, what a great way to uh, roll out a CBDC if everybody's afraid that aliens are going to come and attack, you know, and, and uh, people are not even going to be thinking about, you know, a digital currency. If people are, you know, if, if the markets are crashing, which they are, you know, in the sense of markets, the dollar inflation, uh, you know, the... Um, all the, all the rate hikes that we've seen and the collapsing of banks and the consolidation of banks going into, um, you know, the bigger banks and sort of JP Morgan even running for the presidency and, and, to, and, and literally taking over all the small banks. You know, we're seeing this, this very clear road of uh, consolidation of power into a, a group that has it now. They're in power now and they're, uh, they're going to try everything in their might to keep it. So they're, you know, I would uh, assume that they were, they're going to pull out all the cards. And we know the Alien uh, Agenda Project Bluebeam card was, has been talked about, you know, from whistleblowers from the 60s. Now, I don't think we're going to get a Project Bluebeam exactly that type of an event, but uh, just, you know, we know that card exists and, and it could be played and it seems like it is being played uh, as we're getting closer and closer to this um, to the election, really, uh, mm-hmm. and it could be a it, this whole UFO thing could could be a big reason an election sways one way or another, and uh, that that's you know everything is is go- we're going down this timeline where we're you know elections are coming and our be- biggest con- contestants right now uh, the biggest players seem to be Trump, uh, RFK Jr. and uh, DeSantis. And there's a couple others out there. I know Miriam Willisim and others, but really the, the, the ones that sort of people say may have a chance are those three. And, um, and they're uh, not really talking about the UFO files right now. DeSantis a little bit, not too much. Um, you know, Marco Rubio and DeSantis, I know that camp is kind of, they're, they're kind of similar. So they're, they're sort of talking about it. There's some other Congress members talking about it, but uh, you know, we saw on the news when they were having those skiff meetings they talked about and they came out and some of the congressmen actually came in and said, uh, you know, uh, be very afraid, right? They're using those terminologies where they're like, lock your doors. You know, this, what, what we just know, what we just found out. Sorry, my cat is uh, mm-hmm. coming in to say hi. Um, so that, 
that's all, you know, the, all these pieces of the puzzle are starting to really fit together very clearly. And we have uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. who's running and big part of his campaign is I know, he says, I know the CIA killed my father and killed my uncle. And, uh, and he's not saying he's going to dismantle the CIA like, uh, you know, like his uncle had said when he was in office, but he is saying some major reform and, uh, and all the institutions, you know, DOD, the 50A, all of these compromised, captured, and he uses that term, captured institutions need reform. So I guarantee you the people that are in, in these um, uh, the heads of these these uh, institutions that are part of this continuity of government, deep state, uh, corporate uh, control, whatever it's going on here, they are um, they're scared shitless that uh, that if these guys get in, you know, Trump is all about you know deep state taking out the swamp, you know, he's on a vengeance, you know, and they're throwing him in jail or trying to get him in jail as much as possible, you know, he's <laughs> on that camp, so they're scared, they're on the run. And they're going to pull out all the cards. And I think the uh, the alien uh, fear-based UFO card is is one that they're going to play. And unfortunately, we do have quite a strong religious, um, a lot of the religious communities uh, through fear and have uh, talked about these uh, the ET thing as a uh, you know very demonic and, mm -hmm. and evil. the fallen and angels, the fallen angels, yeah. And I know there's, you know, some truth to that. And, you know, Gigi Young does some great work on, on, on uh, reporting on, on that perspective and stuff. Um, however, you know, through our experiences and again, through the uh, testimony and the, you know, the, uh, um, the many contactees who have come forward, that's just not the case. Uh, the majority of this uh, phenomenon is a, is a positive one and there doesn't need to be fear. Uh, there's a lot of, benefits to humanity as we sort of open our hearts and open our minds to these um, these concepts and ideas. Uh, so it's just really navigating all of the noise that's being thrown out there and, uh, and calming people who may take that approach and say, you know, look, uh, I've been talking ETs for 10 years. Am I, mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, uh, I haven't like, <laughs> it, if anything, it's the ones that are perpetuating that fear-based agenda are the ones that are, you know, doing the Satan, satanic rituals and the, mm -hmm. the you know, the, exactly. the spirit cooking and all that crazy stuff, right? So my last question for you before I let you go, Ruben, is because so much of your experience has also been asking channelers questions over the last more than a decade. Mm -hmm. Is there any information that has come through in channeling about this disclosure time? Was there any indicators or things that were said that were going to happen during this time? Uh, not, you know, they're very vague. You know how they like yeah. to sort of leave <laughs> and it not to future us telling, to right? Mm -hmm. And they like to leave it, leave it to us to figure it out. So, uh, I did have a session yesterday. Actually, I was sort of asking uh, a channel. Um, the uh, the energy that was coming through is the raw energy. I don't know if you're familiar with raw. Mm -hmm. um, and I was sort of saying, hey, all this disclosure news that's in the news lately, how's that look from your guys' perspective? And um, sort of trying to get in. So for me, I'm like, oh, big news. Like the whole world's now going to wake up. And they were like, we're not really seeing anything. And, you know, they're, they're like, yeah, it's just kind of, it's kind of the same noise that, that you guys have already or it's going on. There's nothing more so i was thinking this 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 awakening you know humanity is going to wake up to this idea that we're not alone and from their perspective nothing's really changed it's just a bunch of noise at this very point. very interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> so whatever that means not the answer we were hoping for but right <laughs> we appreciate it anyway <laughs> totally well i think Ruben, we have to thank you this. for doing this Sure, sure. I, I, you know, I think this is up to us. You know, the aliens aren't going to come in and save us, or do all, they're waiting for us to figure out our own problems, so we can, so then we can get through it, so then we can have peaceful uh, hangouts. So uh, any type of, you know, and they have said this over the years. Any type of uh, wishful thinking that they're going to come and save us, that's you can completely forget about that. That's not going to happen. So um, the only thing that they might possibly intervene is is in a major nuclear event. 
they even said small ones, they would even let small ones pass. So we could have, uh, you know, small scale nuclear war is still a possibility and they would not intervene in that case. Uh, it would only be some major like total earth devastation type stuff. So that's the only thing, that's the only positive thing we have. <laughs> from the, everything else is, uh, it's all, it's all it does. Ruben, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate your perspective and it's good to have a different perspective from someone who has been on the, the ground level of this for so long. Yep, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for listening and to keep doing your work. Keep doing what you're doing, spreading the word. No, thank you. Well, I'll talk to you soon, Ruben. Thanks so much. Right.